Hey, Rust friends. My name is Edie. And my name is Teddy. And after an amazing pay-per-view by NXT, we got TakeOver. Teddy and I are so excited. We have so much cheese to talk about. There was so much that went on. My heart was like so overjoyed with emotion, but like sadness at the same time. <laughs> and there's just you so were much. sad? Yes, I was sad, Rust friend. And I, you know what? I played myself. It was, it's my fault. It's my fault for, for trusting in and some things that happen, but we'll get to the, to that. Um, okay, but we also yeah. have some cheese that we're going to talk about. You know, there's a lot of things that's been going on in the wrestling community this week. Where Teddy and I are just going to give you our opinions, and um, we hope that you know maybe you feel the same way. Um, but we are trying to get to 500 subscribers this year on our YouTube channel. So if you are not subscribed yet, please consider doing so because Teddy and I have some really great content for you guys. We have recaps, vlogs, interviews. Teddy's going to start cooking eventually on here. We might get a recipe, a recipe every now and then. Like, who knows? <laughs> but we are hoping that you guys, you know. Continue to support us at on Rest Friends, and we do have a big announcement coming up on our social media. So keep an eye out for that at Rest Friends on Twitter and Instagram. But let's get to it. NXT Takeover Rest Friend. What did you think about this pay per view? It was a great pay per view. Literally every single match delivered. Yeah, I was not disappointed at all. Not even by the outcomes of any of the <laughs> matches. You know what? I feel I feel the same way. I was excited. That every match was like a banger. I was like, oh mm -hmm. my God, like every match just kept getting better. And I was upset at the first match, you know, because my girls did not win. So we're starting off with the women's Dusty, Dusty Cup classic. Um, and this was the first one of its kind for the women, which I was excited for because I'm like, yes. oh my God, yes, we're getting women tag teams on NXT. Let's go. Um, and the women's tag team, you know, division isn't really like up there in WWE. So I was excited that like at least NXT is starting it off, you know? So we got Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai versus Chauncey Blackheart and Ember Moon. And this match to start off the night, first of all, was just such a great decision by NXT, by Triple H and Shawn Michaels in the back who were running the show. You know, mm -hmm. I think this was a good, a good, you know, First match, I was excited. I'm like, oh my God, Shotzi and Ember came out looking fantastic in their matching outfits. I I didn't have a bad thing to say about this match, except for like the outcome. I wish that it was Shotzi, you know, and Ember getting that opportunity for the women's tag team titles. But I wasn't mad at it because Raquel looked like a monster rest friend. Oh my goodness, the strength on that girl. Yes. That girl is insane. I, I couldn't believe it when she picked up um, Ember and she dented the ramp. I, <laughs> my breath was taken away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think, man, I, I thought it was a great match. Yeah. And I did like the outcome. Mm -hmm. I think either or even if Shotzi or Ember would have won, I would have liked it as well. I just I did think this match was a little bit all over the place for a while. Yeah, there was so many close calls and I'm talking about so many mm -hmm. that I think I lost count. Um, but it was a great match. Raquel, like I said, she's insane. Yeah. That woman is man, so strong. She really the way is. she just picks up Dakota Kai like nothing, like nothing. And I know Dakota Kai is tiny, but still, you know, um, um, Ember Moon and Shotzi with their amazing makeup. Like you yeah. said, they were matching. They looked beautiful. I love that Ember Moon is finally back because she was out for so long from injuries. Yeah. And to see her back in that ring doing what we love to see from her, I was I was so happy. It was crazy. I I mean, I knew how, Ra how strong Raquel was, but just to see her pick up all these women so effortlessly, I was like, oh my God, this woman has to be in the gym, lifting 5,000 pounds, always. Like, she just picked up Shotzi, threw her against the plexiglass. I thought Shotzi yeah. was done for the night. Like, her body was just like, she yeah. was gone. <sighs> this was a good match. This was a good match. But I, I, did not, I did not like the celebration. William Regal just was out, you know, there, confetti, and then it was done. I was like, okay. You wanted more. Yeah, I feel like it was a big moment. Um, and I feel like when these matches are built up, like these tournaments too, when when they're built up like this, I feel like there should be more, not more confetti, but like, you know, just <laughs> more in celebration terms. 
do you think maybe all the women coming out and like clapping or something, would that have been something you wanted to see? Or what do you think you wanted to see? I don't know. I just, you know what, maybe it's because like the fans weren't there. I mean, you know, like traditionally how they are because there are fans at NXT events. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe I need, I wanted like a video package, I guess. Like I wanted okay. to see people's reactions replayed. I wanted more, I guess, more confetti. You know what? Maybe that would have fixed them. I think you did want more confetti. You know what? I said no, no more confetti, but maybe I did want more. <laughs> you know what? I, de- I definitely understand what you're saying because we just, a couple of weeks ago, we watched the Royal Rum- Rumble, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while we were watching, well, while I was watching the Women's Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. I was remembering how a couple of years ago there wasn't a Women's Royal Rumble. That was yeah. non-existent. Yeah. Right? Growing up, there was no Women's Royal Rumble. So... The only women we had ever seen in the Royal Rumble was China, and that was in the men's Royal Rumble. Yeah. So that, to me, is so special as a woman, you know, mm-hmm. because, like I said, we grew up what seeing what, you know, all these um, bras and panties matches, you know, all these matches that were just degrading women. Yeah. And so I definitely understand where you're coming from. You just wanted more to congratulate the fact that we have a women's Dusty Rhodes classic. Yeah, I feel like match, it, right? because it was it was the first one. Um, and maybe afterwards, I guess the celebrations could have been like less. But I don't know. I was just like, right. um, OK, like it felt very generic. Yeah, OK. I think, well, I definitely like, wish they would have given us more confetti because that's what you wanted. <laughs> Thank you, best friend. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's move on to the next match, which was, of course, amazing because Mr. Johnny Takeover himself was there defending his North American Championship versus Kushida in a match that I would say was probably the favorite, one of my favorite matches that I've seen Kushida in. Um, I think that he has really had a great showing on NXT so far up to like in this feud that he's had, you know, with Gargano and even a little bit of the feud that he had with Velveteen because we know things about Velveteen. And Kushida was just like every week on it. And I'm like, yes, like, yes, yeah. Kushida, give me this. Like, this is what I want. But what a great match between these two. Rest friend, what did you think? Oh, my God. First of all, speaking, you know, you brought up Velveteen Dream. Mm-hmm. Coming out, seeing Austin Theory, I'm like, this man is still here. <laughs> and then we see someone just take him. And I was like, Woo, someone finally took him away <laughs> yes dexter loomis coming through and i thought i don't know i love that and then they all come out and they don't even realize it till the end right yeah and they're freaking looking for him on the ground like oh my god what did he, did he fall <laughs> but anyway enough about him i loved this match restaurant mm-hmm. i it was my second um favorite match of the night yeah i could see these two wrestle all day yes every day. they are so great together you know we you know Come on, Johnny Gargano, mm-hmm. Mr. Take, like you said. Um, and then Kushida, who they both of these men are small, right? And they just fly around in the ring and just, I don't know, they're so great. <laughs> I don't even know how to put it into words right now. But I really could see these guys wrestle all day, every day together because that was such a great match. Yeah. Oh my God, rest friend, can I tell you? When um, before the match even started, I think they had like a, the, the little backstage segment that you were talking about where they were walking, yeah. you know, to the ring. Um, and the, when I saw Johnny Gargano, I was like, oh my God, Wolverine, because his gear was Wolverine yeah. inspired. And, um, Johnny Gargano is a huge Marvel fan. And I was like, oh my God. And I love Marvel. So I was like, oh my God, he has Wolverine. And then my dad was like, no, what are you talking about Wolverine? That's Johnny Gargano. And I'm like, no, dad. <laughs> I'm like, no, dad, his gear is Wolverine. And he's like, oh, dad. and I'm like, you don't see it. Like, what do you mean? Like, I was offended. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody from me, Wolverine, the Johnny Gargano. I was like, what are you I talking about? Um, but yeah, he 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 was like watching wrestling with me, but like he would stay for a match and then he would like leave and then come back and then start asking me questions. And I'm like, don't ask me anything. You shouldn't have left. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Thank you for telling us that. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, I always share my stories that I got. Um, I don't know if Gargano's arm is okay because... Yes. I feel like Kushida was really on it, you know, outside of the ring after the five counts. Um, even when he would break the hold, he would kind of still hold on to it after. So I'm I'm wondering if this is like going to be an issue going on going forward because 
you know, Kushida, unfortunately, did not win the championship, which yeah, I would have been so excited to see Kushida as North American mm-hmm. champ. Um, but I think maybe they're they're saving it for a Hopefully. little bit. Um, that's what I like to think, <laughs> that they're saving it um, for a bigger moment. But who knows? We'll just have to see. But what a great match from these two. I'm just... Yes. Applause. This was a 5 out of 5. Oh, I said 10 out of 10 would recommend on my notes. So, okay, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Oh, man. Moving on to the men's Dusty Cup, which was exciting. Um, we got to see MSK versus the Grizzled Young Vets. And let me tell you, rest friend, when the Grizzled Young Vets first showed up on NXT, I could not remember their names for the life of me. Like, their tag team name. I was yeah. ca- I was calling them, like, the Vintage Men. The, the Vintage Men. The Vintage, like, I don't know. But I, w- I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> I didn't know what to call them. And I'm like, the Grizzled Young Vets. Why was I calling them, you know, vintage? I'm like, I guess my mind just (laughs) associated that together somehow. Yeah. (laughs) But I also enjoyed this tag team match. Um, MSK was amazing, phenomenal. And I think that NXT is really doing them justice because from their first match that they had, they won and they've been continuing to show what they can do. Now, commentary was really selling this story of of Nash's dad that, you know, when he, you know, he, they watched wrestling together and they bonded. Unfortunately, his dad passed away um, and he decided to become a professional wrestler and how important wrestling was to him. And all this time I'm thinking, rest friend, like, man, if MSK doesn't win this, like commentary is uh, just not a good place. Like, man, what were you thinking while you were watching this match? I don't know much about both MSK and Grizzled Young Veterans, mm-hmm. especially Grizzled Young Veterans. Yeah. I'm like, who are these guys? Um, At least, you know, we know from, from Impact of, you know, of the Rascals. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. And I'm like, I didn't know what to expect from this, especially because um, the Grizzled Young Veterans, what are their names? What are their... I wish you know. I knew one. Of- <laughs> okay, that's okay. That's okay. But one of them looks so familiar to me, so I'm like, okay, I don't know. Anyway, going into is it the match, one with I'm the like, long hair or the one with the, who's bald? No, the one with the short hair. The, oh, the yeah. bald, the, bald. <laughs> the short hair. Okay, the one that has no hair. <laughs> <laughs> Not the one with the long hair. Yeah. But anyway, I think it was a good match. I definitely after seeing on Twitter that people were in love, yeah, and especially with MSK, and everyone was also so happy with the outcome how did you feel about the outcome i was happy i'm telling you i'm like oh man i'm really excited that you know they got brought over from impact but they were also making an impact (laughs) no no pun intended um on nxt because a lot of you know we see people who, who don't make it you know we saw um, Sammy Callahan was on NXT for a little bit and, he, yeah. you know, it didn't work out there, which is so unfortunate because we see how great Sammy Callahan has been doing on Impact. Um, so I was kind of like, it's always like a 50-50 with how they're going to, you know, sell these people to us. And they did a great job with MSK. I'm so glad that they're getting this push because they are an OG tag team. So I feel like yeah. they can start building up the division um, because I was telling my dad, like this whole time, th- this match, I was selling you know, MSK to him. So I'm like, oh man, you know, dad, MSK this and an impact this happened. And I'm like, man, I'm gonna look real dumb if they don't win because I've been <laughs> selling. <them. laughs> no, but that's so cool that you were so excited for them because like you said, you know, they just debuted not so long ago. Mm-hmm. We didn't, how did we think that they were already going to get here yeah. when they just debuted? Mm-hmm. And I was telling my dad, I'm like, you know what? It's it's crazy because they could really build a tag team division off of these two. You know, f- right now yeah. we only have, let's say, like the Undisputed Era. And who knows, even that after what happened last night. I'm so sad. Yeah. But we're not there yet. We're at the... <laughs> yeah, no, we're not. We're at Finn Balor and Pete Dunne now um, for the NXT title. And five stars. Just five stars, restaurant. This match was fantastic. Um, how do you feel about Finn Balor? I thought it was a very good match. It was my favorite match of the night. Mm-hmm. Um, which is oh, why this I said one was your favorite match? Second. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Finn Balor and Pete Dunne, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we'll go. Yeah, I'm, were... I'm leaving the, the women for, for last. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, I, that was my favorite match. I think these two are incredible, obviously. I'm a huge fan of Finn Balor. Pete Dunne as well. I think Pete Dunne. Um, I don't know how, but this man never has a bad match. Yeah. Ever. He is so great. He's so great at selling. Mm-hmm. He's so great at um, 
delivering everything. This man is so freaking, uh, he's small, but also so powerful. I don't know why I'm putting my arm out here like he's everyone can see my freaking hand. He's small. <laughs> Um, like from Bella, you know, but to me, Pete Dunn just has all this strength that I'm like, where does it come from? And especially now that he's leaner. Yeah. Like, he's just got, I don't know. I don't know. These, both of these are incredible. On my notes, I have, I love Pete Dunn. I love that Bella is not back in NXT, which is, yes. you know, I keep repeating this. I say this every time. I'm so happy Finn Bella is back. And okay, the rest of my notes are about, we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about it in a bit. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I think this match was fantastic. I think it's always great to see Pete Dunne because I I feel like anytime I watch him wrestle, like, I'm going to feel a type of way, you know? Like, I, I feel sometimes scared watching him wrestle because yeah. the way that he just, like, makes people feel pain makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. I'm just like, oh, like, I could I could feel that, you know? I feel like yeah. sometimes when, when you're watching wrestling, you're like, I don't know if you ever think about this, but sometimes I'm like, hmm, would I be able to take that? Like, could I take a super cake, oh, no, you know? Yes. But like, I feel like I could not, like a thousand percent, Pete Dunn starts like messing with my fingers. I'm done. Tap out. It's over for me. You're tapping now. You're. <laughs> I'm done, you know? The one he, if he like puts my arm like in a chicken wing or something, it's over. I'm, I, I didn't <laughs> sign up for this. I don't want to be here. Why? You know? <laughs> oh my goodness. So we get Pete Dunn. Not winning this match, which I saw. I, I saw, you know, Finn Balor retaining. But, you know, this match ends and Pete Dunne's boys come through. Um, the current, you know, tag team champs. And I'm just like, oh, man, where's Undisputed Era? Like, I like the moment, you know, he was getting ambushed. I'm like, OK, I'm waiting. Where where are you guys, you know, coming to the rescue, saving the day? And they do. And I'm like, yes, Undisputed Era showing up in the building. Oh, my God, I'm wearing... Undisputed Era colors, restaurant. You're wearing your Undisputed Era. Oh my god, I am wearing my oh my god. hat. That's so crazy. Oh my god, we were ready to talk about this. <laughs> we really were. We were we were too excited to talk about this. <laughs> so, um, there was a situation that happened where Adam Cole, you know, they're all they're all standing in front of you in the front of the camera, and you're just like taking in the scenery. You're just like, yes, mm -hmm. like this feels right. And Adam Cole, baby, goes and super kicks Finn Balor. And rest friend, my gasp was so loud. My dad was in the kitchen and he's like, what happened? Because I took in so much air, rest friend. Like, <gasps> I had never, yeah. I, I was not expecting this. I was shook. And this wasn't the first of my heartbreak because Adam Cole continued to break my heart and he super kicked Kyle. And in this moment, I feel like my life flashed before my eyes. Um, I didn't even know what to think, rest friend. I'm like, it was just a, sh a moment of shock. I, I, what were you feeling? Restaurant, I was not shocked at all. I was restaurant, not shocked, you were not at all. shocked? <gasps> no, restaurant, restaurant. Adam Cole, baby, is the type of man that cannot be standing next to another star. He has to be the only star, the only star with the spotlight. So I thought it was really weird that there he was again standing with Finn Balor. Uh -huh. Even if Finn Balor was to turn heel, and yeah. be, you know, just straight up heel. I cannot see them working together because Adam Cole cannot share spotlights with another star. Yeah. He can't, that's right. Like, I thought it was so weird. And then WWE puts up their logo that they usually do at the end of a show, right? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, you think this is going to be over. And as soon as he super kicks him, I'm like, okay. I, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I am sad. Yeah. Because I love the Undisputed Era as a whole. Yeah. I love Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, Roger Strong. And I don't call baby. But at the same time, I don't know. I'm not going to deny it. I loved it. I felt happiness. My heart is a little happy. Yes, like I said, sad because I love the Undisputed Era. Yeah. But very happy for Adam Cole. And I was very sad that he also kicked Kyle O'Reilly. I'm like, why? Yeah. Why? You know, Kyle O'Reilly. I love Kyle O'Reilly. But like Sergio said, He's like, but you love Adam Cole more. I'm like, yes, I love Adam Cole, baby, more. I really do. I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And um, it was also very intense seeing what was Roddy going to do. Like, was he going to stay in there and help Kyle O'Reilly? Or was he going to yeah. go join Adam Cole? And where the so hell is Bobby Fish? I know. Yeah. But, you know, I'm like, I wonder what's going to happen. To be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Adam Cole goes on his own. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, maybe to the main roster? Like, is it time? Is this what's going to happen? 
or, you know. You know what? This is where Mario from Lucha Outsiders would give me congratulations. Because he's going to be like, Iridian, if you knew how Adam Cole was, why are you surprised, you know? Yeah, we're friends. And you were so shocked. And he's like, we're friends. When I started watching wrestling, um, of course, Undisputed Era, I, I never liked Undisputed Era because I'm like, they're <laughs> always beating up my people. <laughs> why? You know, I, I just, I wasn't understanding. And um, after a while, you know, I learned to love Undisputed Era, but I still remember being at Survivor Series and I'm like, rest friend, I have four days to learn who is in Undisputed Era because I only yes. know Adam Cole. Like, yeah. that's the only person that I know. It's like, it's like Maroon 5, you know, where you only know Adam Levine. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can't name the other members. That's how okay, I felt well, when I was can... first exposed. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's how, how I felt I when I was you. first exposed mm -hmm. to Undisputed Era because they were selling Adam Cole always, and I'm just like, okay, but like, what about everybody else? You know? I was like, we cannot compare Maroon Five to Undisputed <laughs> Era because yes, Maroon Five has some songs that are you know I could jam to, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, but you can jam um, to all the Undisputed the... Era album, is what you're saying. <laughs> The whole album. Yeah, they yeah. would have hits after hits after hits. Yeah. And everyone would know all the members. Yes. You know, maybe in the beginning they'd be a little confused like you, but then they would. But eventually they would. Now yeah. you know. Yes, you know yes. exactly who each, and you know who they are. Yeah. Here's the thing. I'm also excited to see if there's any, if anything's going to happen between Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly because Adam Cole, Bebe, and Kyle O'Reilly have a huge past. Yes. A very long past. They started off together in the Indies and then um, Sergio has told me before and showed me how they had a, a very good rivalry. Like, yeah. they had very good matches against each other. And so are we going to see that in NXT? Like, that is so exciting, especially to see Kyle O'Reilly go up there and yeah. stay up there with Adam Cole. So I don't know. Let's see what we see. What's well, gonna happen. we're going to have to figure something out, but I'm disappointed. <laughs> I know so you were definitely shocked and disappointed. But, like, I could see it in your face. But yeah, when when Undisputed Era, like when I was first introduced to them, I, I never liked them because they were always beating up my favorite people. And then when they started, you know, becoming sweethearts, I'm like, this is the Undisputed Era, like that I've always wanted. You know, the good guys, like, right, and you know, no. you know. But I, I can't, I can't be mad for the. They're fake. I, I, I can't be <laughs> mad at the Scorpion for like picándote. You know, if that's what they do, yes, that's what they do. Yes. Um, but Pat McAfee went on Twitter. This man said, internet wrestling community, I am now accepting your apologies in abundance. You are by far the dumbest group of humans on the internet. You could have never known that your hero was a treasonous scumbag, but I knew it all along. Please use hashtag Pat was right in your apology tweets. This man is gold. <laughs> man, he saw the opportunity and he took it. Yes, yes. And it's like, do you remember the next day after his war games match that he showed up to his podcast in like in yes. the neck brace? Yes. Selling the shit out of that injury. And I was like, Pat McAfee, I applaud you because I thought yes. he was going to come in here like Ronda Rousey, not be good and talk shit always. And this guy was putting in the work and he was committed, putting in the effort. And I'm so like, I, I love Pat McAfee. I really hope that they bring him back. Um, yes. Yes. Because he's gold. Like, he's gold. So He's great. He's amazing. Um, yeah. We, we needed to get that huge cheese mat out of the way. Before we talked about the women's triple threat match, um, Io Shirai versus Tony Storm versus Mercedes Martinez. Um, and this was for the NXT Women's Championship. This was a really good match. I feel, oh, of course, all the matches were, like, really good matches. But there was just something about this one that felt a little different because EO hadn't like put her title on the line in a while. And we were really getting to see how Mercedes, you know, was going to be a powerhouse because she was in reckoning for a little bit, but then she wasn't. So we don't know what the situation was there. And Tony yeah. Storm just being fantastic always and like one of my faves. I wasn't seeing um, EO losing the title. How did you feel about this match? No, I agree. I agree. Um, I really couldn't see them putting the belt on Mercedes Martinez yet. Mm -hmm. Yet, I wish they did. Yeah. I am so ready to see her as the women's champ of NXT. But I also didn't see them putting it on Tony Storm. Yeah. So I definitely, the whole time, not that I was really wishing she kept it, but I think Io Shirai is the perfect women's champ. Yeah. I She's great. She can ride she, this out. Yes. This woman keeps getting up on high places and jumping off of them like 
it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Very, very Jeff Hardy like where I worry about how high she is. And yeah. I worry about if she's going to be OK. <laughs> Yeah, like, I wonder if they pay her, like, thousands of dollars just to do that. Because she does them all the time, like, nothing. Yes. And I'm like, wow, I love her. That is a really good thought, restaurant. I wonder if high flyers get paid more. I I really hope so. Because, because if I was a wrestler and they're like, okay, you can jump off the top rope and get more money. Or, or they're like, oh, you know what? Everyone gets paid the same. I would not be jumping off the top rope. Hell no. I wouldn't be doing any of them. Like, not if I'm getting paid the same as this person next to me. <laughs> Uh-uh. Like, if you want me to jump from up there, you better put you better, an extra... You better put the money up there, too, all the way up there, like... Exactly. Like, you better throw me the money first, and then I'll jump <laughs> off, you know? Like... <laughs> there was one moment in the match that um kind of ruined it for me. Um, the, the girls were doing such a good job, and this was... Tony was going to, I guess, put somebody through the table, the commentary table. Mm -hmm. So she started taking things off the table. Tony turns around. The table collapses. Oh, yeah. That's what Sergio... I missed that part. Sergio's like, did you see the table collapse on its own? I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, man. The, the table <laughs> collapsed <laughs> on his own restaurant. And I was like, there was not even a little bit of wind or anything in the <laughs> arena. I was like, I wonder if Tony si se echó un pedo and it just kind of like wouldn't hold. I was shook. And I'm like, this ruined it. Like, come on. I, Wait, I can't so believe y'all did the women dirty like this. I was going to say, now that makes me think, what are they doing to the props that the women are going to use? Yeah. I mean, I know, I feel like they have to let like a few screws loose, you know, before. But literally, Tony had just taken off the the, the, the TV, like the little TVs that they have. She moved a couple yeah. papers and then bam, the table like fell. And everybody on Twitter was talking about this. And I'm like, it ruined the, it ruined the match for me, restaurant. Well, yeah. I mean, damn. It's like, you know, you're trying to watch a magic trick and then somebody tells you how they do the magic trick and you're just like, oh, well, I don't want right. to watch this anymore. And like, that's a shitty thing to say because you're like, okay, well, I'm, you know, it's my women. I'm going to support them. But that, that took a lot away from the match for me. Yeah, I get you. I get what you're saying. I was disappointed. Disappointed. But something happened to the NXT pre-show that I was very excited about. So I have no idea who this guy is. I have not seen him on Impact, but Eli Drake. Reportedly, not reportedly, because he did. He showed up on the NXT um, pre-show. He showed up. He's like, he hello, what's up? You know, I'm Eli Drake. Well, not Eli Drake, but he's L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's going to be like in, in the next Batman film, I guess. <laughs> Dark Knight. Who knows? <laughs> do, you, do you know about this guy, Rest Friend? Um, not much, Rest Friend. Mm. Um, he's handsome. He's a handsome I man. I, I would just have to let put that in there. Let me tell you guys that Edie <laughs> definitely mentioned this before we started recording. She's like, a restaurant. I think he's good looking. Like, do you think he's good looking? I'm like, oh, you know? I always try to get restaurant's opinion. Like, I'm like, if, yes. is it just me or is he attractive? Like, <laughs> I'm writing this down on my notes right now. Edie has a crush. <laughs> For next week's episode when I bring is, him up. He's added on your list now, on your mm -hmm. bay list. Is he, is he on there now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely on there. Okay he's, okay, not, he's not very high up yet because I don't know of him. So I'm going to have to warm up can, to him, you know. Can you refresh our memories and, you know, tell us who's up there? I have a lot. I have a lot of lists when it comes to bays. Like I have, like, you know, the un, I can't, the, the no touch list, which is the people <laughs> who are married. And I'm never going to say that list because they're, they're still married, on your bay list. But they're on, they're on a separate list, but it's in the bay category, you know. Okay. So like people who are definitely still up there, um, Elias. Marco Stunt, which is two very different people, you know. Um, oh, yes. Seamus, uh, Sami Zayn. Oh, it's, that's a lot of gingers on the list. Um, <laughs> you know, but some people, it's crazy because I don't know some people like who are married. So I, I you know. That's true. Just, yeah. But at least, okay. Is there at least one married man on there that is on top, top? You know what? Kyle is looking great. I love Kyle, but I'm not sure if Kyle's married. I saw him. I think, yeah, me either. I, I think, I think Kyle might be married. And I think Sammy's definitely married. I think so, Sammy's married. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I have, well, to, you know I have to reorganize my list. I think so. <laughs> yeah, definitely do. Because Jeff Hardy, Lord Jesus. But he is definitely on the no list, on the no touch list. Yeah, he really he has kids <laughs> and a wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the kids too. <laughs> Moving on. 
Oh so um, our girl Taya Valkyrie also signed to NXT. And this was news because we, I mean, I, I didn't think that she would have gone to NXT. I thought they would have just moved her up to the main roster with her bae, John Morrison. But I, I don't know. I mean, this is exciting for me, you know, new women in yeah. NXT. And this is a woman who is like really established. She was a champ over on Impact. So rest friend, what are your thoughts on Taya? I'm happy that she's going to NXT because a lot of people are not familiar with yeah. her. They don't know who she is or they, you know, a lot of, you know, we know that a, a lot of the WWE wrestling, what do they call them? The WWE universe are not yeah. familiar with stars outside of the WWE. Yeah, yeah. So for them to put her in NXT, that's great because she'll be able to build herself up to, for the fans to know who she is. Yeah. She's great. I love her. This woman is a Canadian güera that speaks Spanish because she worked loca. in Mexico a lot. Yes. La güera loca, you know? And so I'm I'm very excited that she's in NXT. Um, I'm sure she wishes she was with Morrison on the main roster. Yeah. But a lot of these people, even though they have their bays in the in the industry, they work for themselves. Yeah. So yeah. at the same time, I'm sure she wants to put she wants to be known as Taya Vak Valkyrie, Valkyrie, I can't say her name right now, <laughs> and not as Morrison's wife. Yeah. So good for her. Yeah, I wonder um, how that schedule will be because, you know, it's it's different recording on, on a Wednesday night as opposed to a Monday or a Friday. Um, right. And that's like travel restrictions, like who knows. But um, I'm excited look, for, for the new talent. We have we have people like Britt Baker and Adam Cole who are in totally different companies. That's true. You know, and then also Io Shirai, whose husband is in Japan. Yeah. So they can all make it work for the love of the business. For the love of the business. Oh, my God. And for the love of us, because they, they really do love us. Right. Yeah. Um, now to uh, the chisme of the podcast, which I'm super excited to talk about. So there's, like, rumors about Sammy Guevara and what's happening mm -hmm. over there at AEW. But we know that AEW has really been trying to expand not only for AEW, but they're really working with other companies like Impact. And now we've seen that New Japan is also going to be involved and in this storyline of the inner circle, Sammy Guevara is like leaving the inner circle. And it was said that his storyline was to continue on impact. And he was going to like make a name for himself there. I'm, I'm more of a name, I guess. But there was creative differences, I want to say, or like scheduling wasn't working out. And Sammy wasn't really happy with what was going to happen on impact. So that kind of fell through. And rumor was that Tony Khan was pissed that this you know didn't go as planned but i'm just like unsure because there's you know a lot of websites saying a lot of different things different things um i i don't know how to feel about this because if i was working for a company right like if i got hired for one place and my boss told me hey you're you know you work for us but we're gonna send you off somewhere else i would say hey, you know, I, I work here. Like, this is what I can do. Like, this is my schedule. Why am I being sent off somewhere else? You get me? I completely understand. Like you said, we don't know what's really going on because different websites are saying different things. Some of them, some people are saying that Tony is pissed. Others are saying that, no, that he understands and yeah. he's fine. Um, whatever the situation is, if who knows if Sammy is not happy with the storyline he's going to get or if he's just not happy to go from AEW to Impact because it's two very different companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're working together, yes. And, you know, there's been, a, you know, Kenny Omega has been over there. A lot of the stars from AEW have been in Impact. Mm -hmm. But if it's because he doesn't want to leave AEW to go to Impact, I completely understand that. Yeah. Where I, when I, the factory, we, me and Sergio met at a factory, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So where that factory that we used to work at, I started off in one department mm -hmm. and then they moved, the, they moved me to a completely different department a couple of weeks later, like two months later, because I was the newest one. So I had no say. Yeah. I was like, why? Like, why do I have to move? Like, oh, it's because everyone that has been here longer than you, they don't want to move. They want to stay here. Yeah. And the reason they were moving the other people, I mean, the reason they were moving me mm -hmm. is because these other women on the other side were having issues with their boss. Yeah. So they were taking them to my side and that's why I had to go over there. And I was pissed, Russ, right? I stopped going to work a couple of days because I couldn't work in that different, it was such a different environment. Yeah. So I'm sure that's how Sammy 
is, you know, if that's the situation, I'm sure that's how he's going to feel too. It's a totally different environment. Yeah. A lot of them say that a lot of AEW stars have said that AEW is like a family, like mm-hmm. a big family. And they're so happy. And maybe it's totally different in impact. Yeah. And that's, yeah, that's a thousand percent probably why why Sammy was like, no, like this isn't like for me, you know. Yeah. But it also, I mean, I, I guess I see both sides because you're not only are you going to be on AEW, but you're also going to be on impact. You know, exactly. your storyline continues throughout the week. You have more eyes on you. Um but we just we just don't know the whole story. And um, yeah, I know it's so hard to really put your input when we don't really know what's going on. Yeah, because like you would see both sides too. Like if I'm your boss, if I'm Tony Khan and I'm telling you this, this and this and this is what you're going to do. You're wrestling at the end of the day. Like it's a business. Like do it. Right. But right. also you have to be like, OK, well, this is my employee. Like, and if they're uncomfortable and if and if they don't think this is going to work out, well, maybe I should listen to them. So it's just like yes. where what am I supposed to think? Yeah. And um, I. It, it's crazy because Kenny, Kenny's on on AEW and he's also, you know, on on Impact. So Kenny's not complaining, but Kenny's the champion. Yeah, but then Kenny, right? Kenny's a champion. He's a star. Kenny, I'm sure Kenny's has been, a lot everybody more knows say Kenny, than Sammy. right? Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't know. To very, I don't know. I I just really, I really hope that. Whatever it is, mm-hmm. if it's because he's uncomfortable, I hope that they let him just stay where he's comfortable. Yeah, and let him progress but, his storyline the way that he wants to on AEW, if that's the situation. Right, right. But we, we never know what could happen, you know? I don't think Tony Khan is the type of person that would be like, oh, well, you didn't listen to me. You know why you're going down now. Like, mm-hmm. your storyline isn't going to go anywhere and you're not going to be on TV for a while. He doesn't, to me, he doesn't look like that type of person, like that type of boss. To do that. Yeah. Um, But... We'll see what happens. We'll- we will see how, how this story evolves. And, yeah. you know, with this partnership of AEW, there has, there's there's a name that's been thrown into the picture. And um, if it's true and if it happens, um, the star is said to be on Impact and AEW. And that person is a huge star in Japan. Best friend. Drum roll. Who is the name? Kazushika Okada. Man. Okada. Oh, can, Okada. Oh, my can God. Can you imagine Okada in the US of A? Could you imagine the goddamn matches? Impact or AEW? Man, rest friend. And that only brings more hope. Like, if he does come over here, that only gives me hope. And a lot of us fans, hope. That he's not the only one that'll come over here. <laughs> well, Rest friend, you know, Tony Khan was talking about some forbidden doors and, you know, yes. being opened. And I'm, these are all of the doors. I'm telling you, I told, I said this the last time. They lied to us. The Young Book said nothing's ever going to happen with New Japan. Mentirosos. And here, look at where we're at now. <laughs> Mentirosos. Mentirosos. Yeah, like, look, look at where we're at now. The possibilities are endless now. Yeah. I've always known that that possibility was definitely. Um, uh, what do you call it? That it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Why? Because from the beginning, AEW allowed Kenny Omega, who was the AAA champ. Is he still AAA champ? Wow, I'm terrible. I don't even know. <laughs> um, they allowed him to keep that championship. Yeah. On AEW, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, he wasn't bringing it out or anything, but he was still AAA and champion. that's a big deal to take that's your championship from one company to another. Because if that would have been WWE, they would have told Kenny Omega, like, no, Kenneth Omega, like, you have to leave that championship, you know, let someone else take it because now you are a WWE star. Yeah. But with AEW, Tony Khan's like, that's fine, you know? Tony Khan's like, yeah, whatever, bring over as many belts as you want. Yeah. And then they started working with NWA. Like, come on. Really? Did we really think nothing was going to happen? It's crazy. Then Impact, and now now it's open. The door's open. I'm so excited because... I'm telling you, the opportunities of all of the matches that we can have. Um, oh, my goodness. The fact that these stars will be more accessible to, like, the casual wrestling fan. Because um, I, I don't watch New Japan always. And I, I catch up on, like, what's happening on, on Twitter. And the same thing happened with, with Impact initially. Like, I was not watching Impact. And then Kenny started getting involved. And now all of these storylines were so connected to each other that if you missed what happened on Impact you maybe were not going to get why what was happening on AEW. So you were just like, oh shit, now I got to like 
really, you know, focus on everything. And if Okada comes on Impact or on AEW, I'm just going to be like, wow. Just oh my God, my friend. So I'm, I'm going gonna, to gonna, probably like you, then I'm going to be shook. I'm going to be yes. screaming. I'll be like, oh my goodness. Actually, I don't scream, mm-hmm. but I do get overly excited. I start dancing and doing all these things. I'm like, oh my God, I Best freaking friend, love this. I need one of your reactions, por favor. Like, I need you to call me one of these days and we're just going to watch it together so I can get your like, Dance I got you, best friend. That's I got what you. I need. When Kenta, when mm. Kenta appeared, yeah. best friend. Oh my god! I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing ever. I thought it was so freaking cool. Yeah. Would a crowd have made it a lot better? Yes, but oh, still, yeah. me as a fan, like, I was like, oh my god, that was so freaking cool. And Sergio was next to me. He's like, yeah, that was really fucking cool. Um, so to see the Rainmaker, are you kidding me? I love Okada. Yes. So if we were to see the Rainmaker, and Impact or AEW, like we've been saying, especially AEW because I am an AEW fan. Yeah. Oh my God. I, oh my God. Just what a great job wrestling is doing right now. Yes. Um, I think, I don't know anything about business, mm-hmm. but I'm sure business wise, this, business is, great is, for booming. Them. Business is booming. Business is booming. Yeah. Could you imagine the merch when it starts to come out? Like you get a new Japan AEW Impact shirt. Like my headphone came <laughs> off. I was so excited. Damn. Like, could you just imagine that collab of like you're gonna have like Kenny Omega and Okada and Moxley, and then you're gonna throw in a Chris Jericho and like all these people on a shirt? Like it's gonna be fantastic. It'll be phenomenal. I'm excited. I'm so excited for what's to come. And we have more pay per views next week. We have a whole nother pay per view on Sunday. We have Elimination Chamber. And that's just going to be a whole lot more wrestling that we're going to talk about and we're going to cover. We are going to keep you guys updated on this Sammy Guevara chisme. Yes. Because, you know, I think it's very interesting. I'm telling you, if if I got hired at Target and they're like, oh, well, you know, we're going to send you to work at Walmart. Hell no, you're not going to send me to work at Walmart. Not saying that one company is Target you, and another's Walmart, no, right? right? Not saying that. Literally that literally sounded... Like you're comparing AEW to Target I know. and Impact I just, to Walmart. I literally just realized that as I was saying it, and that's not how I meant it. But I'm just saying, you know. No, like, no, no. Yeah. Saying if I got hired at one company to do one thing and the, another company, it's just like, even though they're both selling the same thing, I don't know how I would feel about that because, you know, I got hired no, here. Yeah. Absolutely. But, who Absolutely. Knows? I feel like I'm going to get roasted for that, and I didn't mean it like that. No, and you know what? I was just instigating, but... It's a true. You could have said, "I'm working at Target, and they told me to go work at Home Goods." You know, yeah, it's, the, it's, same like, it's the same thing. It's they a sell totally things. different environment. Yeah, yeah, they both sell stuff for people to buy, right? But it's totally different. It's a very different environment. So I definitely understand that. And yes, we're definitely going to keep everyone updated on that. And yeah. a lot more achievement. Things always happen in wrestling. Yes. Every single week, something new comes up. Someone tweets something stupid. Mm-hmm. Someone comes out pregnant. Someone leaves. Or someone gets signed. Like something, there's always choosing it. And yes. that's the great thing about this community. And it's crazy that, you know, we have this platform to be able to speak on so many things. Like we didn't even talk about Casey Catanzaro not wearing a mask anywhere. Like we're going to have to probably say that's next episode. That's probably going to be a whole episode on its own. This woman. And how she deleted her Twitter. Yes. Oh, take it. Sorry, yes, guys. You're that's right. For next podcast, like, oh yes. my God, we got, we have so much fun on here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, like we said, if you guys are not subscribed to the Rest Friends podcast um, or, you know, Rest Friends on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe because we have some really great content for you guys. Um, Teddy and I work really hard on here and we are trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, you guys have been so supportive and so helpful and we honestly appreciate you guys. You know, you're always reaching out to us on Instagram and Twitter and like, tagging us in things and, you know, upcoming opportunities. And we are so grateful for that. Um, yep. But uh, we will see you guys next time, you know, where we're going to talk about Casey Catanzaro and her not wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, guys, we will see you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>